Now, to give you just a brief introduction about Seligence, moving along here. Seligence was formed in mid-2017, just over four years ago now, when leadership experience from Aris Global realized that there was consistent regulatory challenges among the previous customer base. And since formation about four years ago, we've quickly grown with a wide range of experience from our deep pool of talented industry members and subject matter experts in the field. And currently, our client base is roughly around two dozen, ranging from small to mid-size, as well as top 20 clients such as J&J, Novartis, and Batch Health, as well as a few others that you can see on the right-hand side here. And with the formation of Celligence, the goal is to help the life sciences industry achieve their core objectives by improving compliance, increasing efficiency, and productivity while reducing costs at the same time. And moving along here, this is our comprehensive coverage. Um, this is an overview listing out pretty much all of our capabilities. As you can see, it is a long list, but we do have the expertise to cover the entire end-to-end -end, um, the entire end -to -end spectrum of product lifecycle management from ECTD and labeling services to regulatory writing as well. Now, the first pillar covers regulatory consulting, which is more of advisory consulting roles, whereas the next four are more related to operational support. Our focus is post-clinical and pre-approval in terms of marketing authorizations and to provide region-specific support including content creation, translation, and communication. And for any questions, feel free to reach out and let me know and contact information will be provided after the webcast. So now moving on, I'd like to introduce our featured presenter, James Ma. He's the Executive Director of Business Technology and Innovation at DMED Global. Pharma biopharmaceutical. Uh, James is responsible for the development and implementation of information technology strategies to enhance the company's competitive edge. He leads technology, platform design, cross-functional business solution building, for example, regulatory and ECTD solutions to infrastructure setup, as well as information security enhancement. Uh, James has well over 20 years of IT experience in global biopharmaceutical companies and CROs. And Prior to Pfizer, James had worked at CompuWare in the US, Singapore Telecom, Yellow Page Company, China National Computer Software and Service Corporations, as, as well as others. Now, I would like to introduce James and welcome in. James, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. This is James Ma from DMED Global. Uh, let me introduce DMED and Cleaning Pace. DMED is a uh, China-based CRO headquartered in Shanghai, and Clinic Pace is a U.S.-based CRO. Um, this April, DMED and Clinic Pace got merged. It become a combined company, has a worldwide footprint. Uh, from the slide, you can see we now we have over 1,750 staff worldwide, and is uh, in in. North America, we have 450. Europe has 300. And in Asia, area, we have 1,000. Uh, we committed to quality and flexible deliveries. Here is some features of this combined company. We have 60% uh, backlog is oncology, and 75% are customized. Currently, we have 96 ongoing trials. Uh, we have 38 new trials per year. Now, let me start to introduce the agenda for today's webinar. <laughs> Today, I'm going to give an introduction of China ECTD overview, and then for China's specific requirement. I'm going to have an introduction focused on the ECTD requirement, technical requirement, and validation criteria. And then, based on the requirement, I will introduce the challenge to meet this requirement. Finally, it's our solution. First, let me give you an overview of China ECTD. The discussion about China ECTD between the industry and the 
Files Authority started since 2015. To smoothly implement the ECTD in China, HA has dropped three versions of ECTD guidance, technical specifications, and the validation criteria, which were issued and collected public feedback in 2017, 2019, and 2020. HA also facilitated two rounds of pilot testing after the second and third draft guidance were issued to go through the entire submission creation, dispatch, and acceptance process. The most updated draft version of ECTD guidance, technical specifications, and validation criteria were issued on September 21st, 2020. And the information we share in the following slides are based on this newest version. According to the draft ECTD guidance, submission in ECTD format would be applicable to all submissions for IND, NDA, and ANDA for both chemical product and biological product. Paper submission would still be acceptable during the transition period. To transit the applications from paper format to ECTD format for totally new application that does not exist, a historical submission, submission in ECTD format could start from original sequence. If the application does exist historical submissions, a baseline submission is recommended to be submitted before you submit the subsequent sequences. After the application be transitioned, to ECTD format. No paper submission for subsequent sequence is allowed. All follow-up sequences should be in ECTD format. The following couple of slides will be focused on China specific requirements regarding ECTD compared to the rest of regions. First, let me introduce the envelope elements. In China, ECTD submissions, only limited information is required in the envelope information like patient type, product type, and the envelope information has been divided into three levels, application, regulatory activity, and sequence. The product number in application level is a China unique concept and it will be clarified in the next slides. Similar to US ECTD submission, the concept of regulatory activity has been introduced into the China ECTD submission to group the submission for the same regulatory purpose by indicating the same related sequence number. Some of the envelope elements are managed by controlled vocabulary, vocabularies. There are two sequence types we would like to bring your attention to, withdrawal and reformat. For a withdrawal submission, not only the withdrawal statement is needed to be submitted, but the applicant also needs to revert the life cycle status for all submitted documents in this particular regular activity to the previous status. This withdrawal submission is associated to complicated life cycle operations to make the application revert to previous status. For the reformat submission, it is also named as baseline submission. It is recommended to submit a module one, module two, and module three documents before the applicant transit the NDA application into ECTD format. Next is the number management. Besides application number and sequence number, product number is also used in China ECTD submission. Product number is a new concept used by China HA to reflect a unique applicant, active ingredient, and dosage form. The product number would be issued by HA and won't change within the entire product life cycle, which means the same product number would be used in the IND and the NDA submissions. 
regarding the application number, the number contains a leading alphabet to reflect the pronunciation for IND, NDA, and ANDA in Chinese. Each application will start with sequence 0000, and the submission need to be submitted in numerical order. This is just a sample of other information in the regional XML. The sample is uh, how the amplifier information would look like with the star sheets applied. In the regional XML, both amplifier information and uh, one node elements would display in Chinese. This is regarding bilingual submission. Talking about Chinese, bilingual submission is required to be submitted in China. All documents in non-Chinese need to be translated to Chinese, and both original document and translated document need to be included in one submission. The documents in Chinese require full navigation applied on these documents would serve as a review document. The original non-Chinese documents will serve as a reference documents. The original ones and the translated ones would be submitted in the same section and different leaf elements, which distinguished by language attribute in XML. The original ones would be named in foreign language and the translated ones would be named in Chinese. As the screenshots illustrate, the language attribute in XML would indicate which documents are in Chinese and could serve as a review documents. And this language attribute helped to differentiate PDF-related validation criteria to Chinese and non-Chinese documents. Only Chinese documents would be needed to pass all PDF-related validation criteria, and non-Chinese documents only need to pass the basic validation to ensure the documents could be open and read. Regarding another important concept of ECTD submission, study tagging file, aka STF and node extension, China ECTD requires a unique practice compared to other ECTD regions that both node extension and STF need to be used in China ECTD submission. The node extension will be used in section 3.2.R for biological products to add additional navigations in the regional section for CNC dossiers. The naming convention for each subsection is fixed and it would be validated. STF would be used in module 4 and module 5 to organize the non-clinical and clinical study documents. The technical specification for STF would follow the NCH technical specifications for STF and the data sets would follow China specific data sets guideline. Next is regarding data sets. China is one of the regions that requires data set to be submitted to health authority for review and require the data set to be submitted in ECTD submission to give industry more information regarding how to submit the data set submission. Health authority has issued a guideline for the submission of clinical trial data sets. The data sets in either legacy format or C-disk format could be acceptable. The clinical trial data, such as the study data sets labels, data definition files, CRF, data reviewer guides, etc., should be mainly in Chinese. Electronic seal is also another specific feature of China ECTD requirement. Another China ECTD submission specific requirement is regarding the electronic seal. 
the electronic seal we have mentioned here is the electronic company of official seal who apply the electronic seal in the PDF file and authorized hard token issued by health authority is required. The electronic company seal is required to be applied on the application form and cover letter. The seal would be validated after the submission has been received to health authority. The guidance regarding how to successfully apply the seal in the submission document has not been issued yet. For the other electronic signatures, which are commonly used, the sponsor internal electronic signature would not be acceptable to be the alternative signature method in the application form and cover letter. Whether the electronic signature authenticated by third party for individual could be accepted is unclear. The China ECTD submission still requires the sponsor to submit the submission via physical media. The CD or DVD disc should be put in the disc box and folder with the official covers. The covers could be issued from the health authorities website and require bad company seal. The submission portal or gateway is under development. Currently, there is no extra timeline when it will be ready for use. The following two slides would introduce the requirements from the technical perspective. First, we talk about the five formats and sizes. In China ECTD submission, only documents in PDF format are acceptable. In data sets, TXT and XPT documents are acceptable. XMLs and OPSSL documents are technical documents serve as a submission backbone. All documents in Word, JPG, Excel are not acceptable, which need to be converted to PDF before they could be included in the ECTD submission. For a single document, the maximum file size is up to 500 megabytes. Due to the storage limitation of one physical disk, for a single data set document, the maximum file size is 4 gigabytes, which is less than the requirement for US data sets submission in ECTD. As we mentioned in the previous slide, all non-Chinese documents need to be translated into Chinese, and Chinese documents would serve as a review document and require full navigation. The formatting and the navigation for the Chinese documents need to follow not only the SEH specification for submission format for ECTD and the ECTT technical specification, but also need to follow the China local format and arrangement specification of drug registration dossier, which was effective since October 1st, 2020. Multiple items have been described in these three specific specifications. The last point we would like to cover in today's uh, webinar is uh, regarding the ECTD submission validation. For China ECTD submission technical validation, 149 validation criteria would be applied to the submission, and the validation criteria have been divided into six categories. Basic identification, file folder, ICH backbone file, regional administrative information, 
study tending farm and uh, PDF analysis, just like other ECTT regions. If the validation criteria are failed to pass, the severity of the failure would be divided into error, warning, and information. If there is a error exists in the validation report, the submission could not be accepted by health authority. If there is a warning exists in the validation report, it is recommended to fix the warning before dispatch the submission to health authority. Otherwise, the sponsor will need to add justification in the cover letter to explain why the warning still exists. Here listed all validation criteria for PDF FAST in China ECTT submission. And these 26 validation items are applicable for all Chinese dossier. Most of the validation items are reflected to error or warning severity to avoid additional effort in fixing the errors and warnings during the submission publishing. Documents e-submission readiness would be extremely important. It would be the key factor to timely satisfy the ECTD submission. Now, I'm talking about the challenges based on the uh, China specific, specific requirement I've just uh, introduced. The first challenge is for submission dossier preparation. From the baseline submission perspective, the requirements specified in the guidance for the NDA application to be transitioned from paper to ECTD. Applicant is recommended to submit module one, module two, and the module three documents as the baseline submission at least. Although, according to other regions practice, usually the baseline submission is for reference only and not be reviewed. It still would cost huge effort in retrieving previously submitted dossier due to the fact that China submissions do not strictly follow CTD to organize the submission dossier, and there were multiple versions of module one document structure have been used. It would be very challenging to migrate the non-CTD submission into CTD submission and harmonize the previous module one documents into current requirements. From the submission timeline perspective, the submission preparation timeline needs to be re-evaluated and the additional time window for submission publishing is necessary. All non-Chinese documents need to be translated and it may take several months to complete the translation and the translation for the full submission package. Once the application has been translated, to ECTD format. All follow-up submissions will need to be in ECTD format, which including the query response submissions. Limited time window will be available for the submission publishing. A well-established submission publishing process, strategic thinking, and flexible publishing solution and rich experience experts would be key factors to complete the submission in timely manner. The second challenge is for ECTD submission publishing. Regarding the submission navigation, since the non-Chinese dossier are reference dossier only, the translated Chinese ones would serve as review documents and applicable to all PDF FAST validation criteria. The Chinese documents will need to apply full submission navigation. 
it would be very time consuming to complete full navigation for all Chinese documents. And there is no previous submitted documents to other region could be reused. China ECTD submission do applicable to completed technical requirements, which include and not limited to both node extension and STF are used. Data set is required. Warnings need to be justified in cover letter, withdraw submission and others. Compared to previously issued draft ECTD technical specifications and guidance, only minor change are made in the most updated ones. The fundamental principle is to apply the strictest requirements in China ECTD submission. Okay, now let me introduce our solution to meet those uh, <coughs> uh, China specific uh, requirement and challenge. Actually, DMAD work with uh, clean pace. We already have uh, lots of experience regarding how to prepare the uh, submission for China. <clears throat> we are currently working with pharmaceutical companies to support the CTD submission, publishing, and uh, dispatch in US to CEDAR and CBER. The ECTD submission publishing activity, including document formatting, submission compilation, submission publishing, submission validation, dispatch the submission to the agency and receive a submission acknowledgement. The submission publishing is a project based to assist the internal record fans team to achieve the submission milestones. We are also currently working for pharmaceutical companies to support them future ECTD submission publishing in China. As part of the engagement, we provide ECTD relevant training deep dive for the technical specification released by relevant agency, impact analysis to current uh, submission preparation process, define new submission publishing process, internal system functional testing, internal pilot uh, submission publishing, global submission publishing process, harmonization training and process uh, discussion with other business function lines. This is our advantage. We not only the expertise have the expertise in regulatory operation and uh, regulatory affair, we working closely with the uh, China CDE. We involved in China ECT guidance review and uh, participate in CDE internal ECT process testing. We also have a very strong technical solution and support team. We partnership with industry leading technology suppliers. We also own the technical experts in tool development. Uh, this is uh, my, intro, uh, my introduction for today. Thank you everyone for your patience. Thank you so much for that, James. Um, that was a wonderful presentation. Now I'd like to invite you back on the line here to join us for a live Q&A session. I'll give you one moment to hop back on the line here, James. Yes, I'm here. Okay, great, great, great. One moment here. Okay. One moment here. Sorry about that. Okay, wonderful. Okay, James, first question. When will the Chinese health authority issue the finalized guidance and start to accept the ECTD submissions? Do we have a timetable for that? <laughs> this is a good question. Uh, currently, there is no fixed date or timetable scheduled by the health authority. The most uh, recent update 
is the health authority has updated the HA official website to including an ECDD specific column which summarizes the issued draft guidelines, future ECDD submission workflow, and other related information. And also, the entries of the ECTD submission channel could be located in the column. Although the function is not available at this time, we could see that the health authority has made progress in moving ECTD submission forward. And uh, the acceptance we expect would be start soon. Got it, thank you. Okay, the next question we've received here is, how can we find the latest specifications and other supporting guidelines in which ICH ECTD version will the Chinese ECTD follow? The latest version of ECTD guidance, technical specifications and the validation criteria and other guidelines uh, could be located in China Health Authority's website. As uh, uh, I previously mentioned, there is an ECDD specific column in the official website. You could easily locate the guideline. Unfortunately, there is only Chinese version and no English version available. Uh, from the current information, China ECTD is likely to follow ICH ECTD version 3.2.2 .2 instead of 4.0. Okay, got it, perfect. The next one we have here, is how do you get the official company seal? Good question. Uh, you can log in the China Health Authority's website uh, on behalf of your legal entity and use all functionalities related uh, to communication with the health authority, submit some essential documents and track the submission review progress. You will need a third-party verified heart token. The heart token not only has a certificate for the login of the website, also could have the official company seal installed. For an MNC, you will need an agent in China to be responsible for the product registration and MAH, who could apply for the hard token and the company seals. Thank you. Okay, got it. And then another one here is a little bit similar. How do you get the product number and the application number? Uh, for US submission, usually you will need uh, to get uh, the application number by email to FDA. Uh, for China ECTD submission, you could uh, apply the number online. After you log in to the health authority's website, you could get all related functions in the applicant platform. Okay, got it. Thank you for that. Um, the next one here, a little bit different. Um, what kind of pilot testing has the CDE conducted? And is any future testing scheduled at the moment? CDE has conducted uh, two rounds of uh, pilot uh, testing based on the issued draft guidance and uh, technical specification. The companies who participate in the pilot were required to submit the submission ready ECTD submissions to, e to CDE. For companies, they need to go through the process to request the product number and the application number on online, filled in the application form and got it electronic sealed, publish, publish ECTD submissions and ensure the submission could pass the technical validation. After CDE received the submission, they also went through their internal process to validate, accept the submission, route the submission to expert review and feedback review result in the website. 
the end-to-end -end process for ECTD submission has been tested. So far, there is no future testing is scheduled. Thank you. Okay, got it. Thank you. Um, next question here. I believe we have uh, time for about three or four more. Um, is there any chance for a local regulatory affairs team member to publish an ECTD submission? And if so, what kind of software would be needed for the ECTD submission? Uh, based on our understanding of China ECTD requirement, we could say that uh, China ECTD follows a very high standard of ECTD submission. It includes several complicated concepts and a life cycle operations. We highly recommend to publish the submission by qualified submission publishers. A publishing system with China specific submission template is required to publish the submissions. Regarding the validation part, CDE is planned to provide the validator on the website for everyone to use it for free. Okay, got it, thank you. Now the next one here, what are the translation requirements for data sets? Uh, basically speaking, health authority in China requires all submission dossiers to be in Chinese. But uh, there are some exceptions for CSR appendix for table figure listing. According to the data sets, specific guideline issued by health authority, the data reviewed guidance and the definition need to be in Chinese and also the labels and variables. For more information, you could uh, refer to the data sets related guideline. Okay, thanks for the clarification. Um, this next one here is a bit more general. Um, what opportunities may the ECTD bring in for, um, for manufacturers? Mm, after China joined ICH, there are more collaborations in pharmaceutical industry. China local vendors have already established uh, the capability to support in the translation, document submission ready check, publishing system hosting, and uh, submission publishing. With the implementation of ECTD, it would help to improve the submission dossier quality and enhance the product life cycle management. Okay, got it. And it looks like um, this will be the last question we'll have time for today. Um, James, in your perspective, how should you prepare for implementation of ECTD? Yes, this is a good question. I think uh, it's uh, uh, very important to mm -hmm. most of the company. Yeah, for both local pharmaceutical companies and MNCs, the strategy to establish the internal publishing team or outsourcing the publishing workload needs to be made. From the system perspective, either the system would be hosted by vendor or in internal environment. For MNCs or local farmer with license in product, get a reliable translation vendor as partner and identify the parties to be responsible for the document level submission ready would be extremely important. Thank you. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much again, James. Um, I believe that's the last question um, we're gonna be able to go through today. Um, if your question was not answered, um, a intelligence representative um, will facilitate um, getting a response to you as soon as we can. I would like to just again thank James as well as DMED and Clinipace for partnering with us here at Celligence for this presentation. Um, a copy of this recording will be available to all attendees and registrants um, 
shortly here once we're able to get this downloaded and uploaded back to our website and YouTube page. Um, I'd like to also encourage for um, other resources, you can explore the Celligence website, celligence.com, to explore all of our services, offerings, um, as well as if you would like to follow up with myself or James, you can reach out to info at celligence.com to connect with us, and we will make sure you will have your questions answered. And once again, thank you so much, James. That was a wonderful presentation and great Q&A session. I look forward to working with you again soon. Thank you, everyone, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, James. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.